Well, hi folks and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Hey, we're in the home stretch of this part of Fifty Shades of Phuket. We're now going to have Phuket go over the experiment of Eratosthenes. We're using nothing but two sticks and some measurements. He was able to determine the circumference of the earth. Let's go on to Eratosthenes. And uh, this image that we are given of the Eratosthenes experiment if you're not aware of what that is, we'll just go and have a look at what we are told about Eratosthenes. Uh, he is said to have been a Greek mathematician, geographer, poet, astronomer, and music theorist. He is best known, we are told, for being the first person to calculate the circumference of the Earth. Don't you just love the way he qualifies everything that he says by saying, well, and this is what we're told as he reads through Wiki. All right, as if this stuff was made up. Okay, so let's cue up the music and see how badly Phuket can mess this up. Again, I referred, uh, I mentioned that the, the timeline here doesn't really matter. So, <clears throat> while Eratosthenes might well have lived before Nicholas Copernicus, the account we are given is that he calculated the circumference of the Earth. Now, again, we don't know for sure what uh, Eratosthenes concluded from his findings, from his measurements. And there is no dispute that those measurements can be made. Phuket, is your favorite flower the hedge? Uh, first, you say we have no way of knowing what he concluded from his experiment. One, the experiment was specifically designed to find the circumference of the Earth. And two, he found the circumference of the Earth. There's no question about it. We're not, there's no debate. All right. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention again, and I'd mentioned this in an earlier one, it's very important to know when these people lived because you have to look at it in the timeline of scientific discovery. For example, you correctly pointed out that he lived before Copernicus by about 1500 years, but after they had determined that the earth was a sphere. So, he was making his measurements based on the predetermined fact that the Earth was spherical. And then he took that information, designed an experiment, took readings, and came to a conclusion. And even today, on, on a yearly basis, people go out and they recreate the Eratosthenes experiment. Yeah, I know they do them all the time. As a matter of fact, I did it last March 20th at the spring equinox as the sun was directly over the equator. I did it from the 45th north latitude and Blue Marble Science did it from down around 32 degrees north. So yes, we can make these measurements and they are scientific in their own right in that we make a physical measurement of shadows or angles of those shadows. But we're going to see that, again, we are looking at how this has been interpreted in favor of the heliocentric spinning globe model. Well, Nick, this seems to be where you're having a problem. Now, we've got a setup right here, and I just want to show you something real quick. Now, with this one right here, we're looking at 90 degrees. This would represent the light shining down the well in Cyrene. And then we get on up here to Alexandria, and we measure a certain angle of the sun based on a stick right there. Okay? But instead of doing Alexandria, let's go ahead and do my experiment. Now, I was at 45 degrees north latitude. So, however far I was from the equator, because the sun was directly over the equator, that would be how high the sun would be. 
Now that's just basic trigonometry. Now that would do a couple of things. First of all, it would tell me the altitude of the sun, and second of all, it would tell me this distance from here down to here, and that would give me this leg of a triangle, and by knowing the distance to another location, say 32 degrees north in Tennessee, I could calculate this triangle and, again, come back to the same spot on the sun. That's just basic trigonometry. When really these measurements are totally open to interpretation. The first of which is the idea of circumference. Now we know that circumference can mean the circumference of a circle or it can be the circumference of a sphere. Now when we come to talking about a sphere, a sphere in space, there are many contradictions here because we know that a sphere doesn't have an up and down, yet we are given a top and a bottom of the globe Earth, the North and the South Pole. We're also given uh, the, the Earth's tilt, a sphere that somehow tilts because it refers to the, 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 the ecliptic plane of the Earth's alleged orbit around the Sun. Now, here's where you're making a mistake. This is a sphere, okay? There's no top or bottom of a sphere. It's not a, the northern hemisphere isn't the top and the southern hemisphere isn't the bottom. Because you can look at it with the southern hemisphere on top as well. It really doesn't matter. It's a three-dimensional object. Again, these are all based on observations from the Earth. Not observations from outside of the Earth, looking at the Earth, going around the Sun. None of that. These are all um, uh, ways of interpreting the observations and measurements that we can make on the Earth. Are you real sure about that, Slick? You know, not only do we have all these photographs of the spherical Earth, anybody that wants to look can see it. For example, you could go out to that viewing platform at Monkey Park, where Critical Think showed that the horizon drops below eye level in all directions. That can only happen on a sphere. So there's no disputing that these measurements can be made. Uh, so let's just go and have a look at uh, the... Okay, so this, this is the picture that we are given and we are told and led to assume that the sun arrives at the globe Earth in parallel rays. Now... The fact that the sun's rays arrive in parallel is not a guess. It, it's pretty obvious you can see it. Now these are crepuscular rays right here. You can see the shadows of the clouds and they all form a parallel line. Now when you see this looking dead on, it looks a little different. Now when you look at these from the ground, we get something called crepuscular rays. Now as you see, the horizon is off in the distance in that photograph, and the sun has just set over the horizon. Yet, the sunlight is still coming up into the upper atmosphere over our head, and it appears to diverge as we look at the source of light. However, this is true perspective, and this is what parallel lines look like going over your head, according to real perspective. And so Eratosthenes uh, waited until uh, it, the sun was directly overhead in Cyan, and so he looked down a well in which there was no shadow, or, or the sun was shining directly down as well, so the sun was overhead. So really we could say that uh, here, this, this uh, red line here, represents the center of the sun. Now, this doesn't dictate the size or the distance of the sun. And that's because this experiment was not designed to determine the size or the distance to the sun. It was designed to determine the circumference of the Earth. And then over here in uh, Alexandria, which was uh, 5,000 stadia away, about 800 kilometers, it is estimated, we had a shadow from a stick that uh, worked out to be a seven degree difference from uh, this vertical or line of sunlight. Yep, that's about right. 
about one fiftieth of the 360 degrees of a circle of the circumference. So by multiplying the distance between Siren and Alexandria, which was approximately 500 miles, we were able to determine that the circumference of the Earth was 25,000 miles. And this is really totally open to interpretation, but what we have here is actually wrong, a wrong interpretation, a false interpretation of how light behaves, and this, this curve has been given to the Earth, and the angle attributed to parallel sun rays. Well, no, that's exactly right. The Earth, which was spherical, and that was a given in this experiment, with the sunlight coming in in parallel rays, as determined by direct observation of those rays, this indeed calculated the circumference of the Earth. But let's see what Nick has a problem with here. Maybe we can help him out a little. Let's go and have a look at what's happened here, what's gone wrong. How has this been misinterpreted? Let's go with the assumption that the sun is a sphere. So with a spherical sun, what we actually have is lines, if you want to consider the sunlight or sun rays as lines, they should be coming out from the sun like this. And indeed they are. Of course, we are given parallel lines, possibly based on the assumption that the, the sun is massive compared to the Earth. But again, that's just an assumption. It's just a, a necessity of the heliocentric model. Well, no, Nick, actually, that's an assumption on your part. There is no assumption being made as to the size or even the distance of the sun. It's just a direct observation that the rays of the sun arrive at the Earth in parallel. And we can tell that by crepuscular and anti-crepuscular rays. We can tell that by the fact that a magnifying glass will focus parallel rays into a very tight point. But if they're divergent rays, they won't come into a tight point. That's how we, we set fires with magnifying glasses. So that really wasn't an assumption. It was an option. Well, actually, I think this is a pretty good spot for us to take a break. Um, next episode, I want to talk about why we know light rays are parallel and why they're parallel. The answer is a little simpler than you think it is. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. We'll see you again soon. Oh, and take a second. Reach down there and hit that little subscribe button. And let's, let's keep in touch, okay? This rabbit hole's too deep for me Feel my brain getting real sore